Hello everyone, Dan Central here and welcome to a video response. Now, I'm really excited to be doing this because it's been a long time since I've done a video response so it's really cool to finally be doing one after all this time. Now, this is going to be a video response to Chris, Novabug. Um, and before I start, I just want to say a massive apology to, to Novabug for taking a bit longer than I initially intended to do this. Um, I sort of mentioned a few days ago that I was going to try and get it done a few days ago. Um, and then, unfortunately, things cropped up at the last minute. I wasn't able to get it done when I wanted to. Um, and due to a busy schedule, which I'm sure we all have anyway, um, it didn't quite happen when I was intending to do it originally. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that, mate. Um, but, uh, you know, I always intended to do it. I just hadn't been able to do it when I wanted to do it originally. But today, I'm finally able to do it. So um, I hope you'll enjoy it. And I hope the answers are, you know, different to other people's um, and they don't repeat too much of what anyone else has said. I've tried to pick specialist answers mostly to sort of um, try and be a bit different. So hopefully it will come across okay. Um, so yeah, this is a video response then to Nova Bugs uh, Friday Foursome. It's my first ever entry into his Friday, Friday Foursome. Uh, it's a great series, uh, fantastic idea. Kind of wish I had um, contributed sooner, if I'm honest. Um, but, uh, you know, time just goes so quickly, it's scary. And before you realise where you are, you know, so many, you know, episodes have gone by or or you know, months have gone by and it's just scary. Um, but, yeah, basically this is um, part of his eighth Friday foursome, I believe. Um, and it's on your four most desired gaming items. Now, just to be awkward... Um, I wasn't sure if you could also include games that aren't 100% finished. You know games that back in the day were never fully completed, they were rumoured, you saw little bits and pieces of sort of um, uh, early footage but the game was never officially finished and completed and, and released. Uh, I wasn't sure if you could include those as well. Um, so I've mentioned sort of one or two things about that kind of thing but in case it's not allowed um, I have also got a proper one sort of as a backup as well. So just to be awkward um, as you do um, I've got one or two like that as well. Um, so basically the first thing that I thought of straight away now obviously some of you that have watched my channel out there you'll know this already I'm a big fan of the Philips CDI. Now I know that the Philips CDI was never a great system. I know it flopped. I know it's got so many horrendous games on it. It's not even funny. But there are a few hidden gems on there that I really, really do enjoy. Um, and I do personally think that sometimes people don't always give it um, enough time um, and give it much of a chance. Um, but yeah, there are a few on there that I absolutely love. And one of those was a game that was released on the system called Escape from Cyber City. Now this is a game that's based on an anime, Galaxy Express 999. And um, there's also another game that was made that's quite similar to that called Freedom Fighter. Um, and so all the visuals were all based on the anime. And uh, you basically had to um, get to the Guardian his headquarters, um, blow his lights out, basically, um, and prove victorious. Um, but it's a very, very fast-paced game. You only get three tries. Uh, your adrenaline's pumping. It's just such a fast game, and it's so enjoyable. There's more than one route that you can take. You basically have to avoid um, creepy police officers and vehicles that fly at you. You can either go through a department store, which I tend to do because it's a little bit easier, or you can go to a skateboarding alley, which is a bit trickier. Um, and you basically just have to keep going forwards, trying to get past all these obstacles that fly at you and reach the, the Guardian's headquarters right at the end and defeat the final boss. You also go on a train as well, and kind of enemies hide behind the seats. And you have to shoot them, but they come up so quickly um, that you don't get a chance to really think about what's going on. And if you're sort of... A, a millisecond too late, shall we say, you die. So it's really, really tough. But I've managed to complete it once. So, so yeah, managed to get through it eventually, but it is a really tricky game. Now, back in the day, they were planning a sequel to the game called Return to Cyber City. And apparently it was 100% completely finished, but it still never got released. Someone in the world claims to own the official... 100% completed prototype of the game, but is refusing at the minute, at least at least currently, to release it. Whether or not he will ever do that, I do not know. But he claims to have it. So it is available somewhere. We just can't easily access it at the minute. So for me, I would love to get my hands on that um, because, you know, I love the first game so much. And to know there was a sequel that was apparently finished is just for me too exciting and the fact that I can't seem to get my hands on it at the minute is really really annoying and um, there was also another sequel that was made for the CDI Voyager 2 which did go onto PC but never got released fully on the CDI um, but the version does exist someone 
managed to save it from being thrown away in a tip one day and released it online and now you can play it um if you if you if you want to and you can actually get hold of it and you can actually you can play it on the system as well if you put it on cd and stuff um so that's awesome but in terms of like return to cyber city it's not something that at the moment we're able to get hold of but it does exist apparently somewhere so i would love to get my hands on that now the next one this is again this is one that as i said at the beginning that i'm not sure if i'm allowed to have because the game was never fully finished um and that's um the well what was originally planned to be the sequel to super mario world on the snes and that's super mario's wacky worlds from the Philips CDI. A prototype does exist and I do have a version of it um, so I can play through the broken levels um, and just see how I keep getting stuck and having to keep reset the system over and over again um, and some of the levels that you click on don't actually load, um, they're sort of dead. Um, it still uses the same music from the original Super Mario World um, but the graphics look really really cool for the time and just to see what they were planning on doing with it in the early stages is really, really intriguing, but it's just a shame it never fully got finished. Um, but yeah, if any of you guys have ever seen videos of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's just, it just looks really, really interesting for a Mario game, especially for the, for the time. Um, and I would just wish they would have fully completed it so I could play it properly. Um, but obviously they didn't, they didn't complete it 100%. So in case I'm not allowed to have that, um, my backup on question on number two, my backup would be Streets of Rage 3. Love the Streets of Rage series. Um, but obviously, Streets of Rage 3 goes for quite a lot. I know a few guys out there have managed to get really good prices for them. I, you know, for example, Aidan Watkins got an amazing deal on Streets of Rage 3 um, when he went to a shop. Um, but, uh, you know, in general, it does go for quite a lot. So it's something that I'd love to have, but I'm not willing to shell out, you know, around sort of 100 pounds sort of plus i guess for it um looking on ebay before i did this video you know a lot of them are going sort of pal complete um for about 100 pounds you know or upwards so yeah not something that i'd be willing to shell out for but would love to to love to own it if i ever managed to see it for a good price um if there was ever a you know a charity shop where you know people weren't aware of the price of it and it was being sold for a cheaper price obviously i'd jump at the chance but uh yeah it's something that i'd love to get hold of but obviously i'm just not willing to shell out that amount of money on it um you know, as it stands, unless I can find it for a cheaper price anywhere else. So that's number two, yeah, if that makes sense. So if I can't have Super Mario's Wacky World because it wasn't fully finished, um, I'm going to choose Streets of Rage 3, okay? Right, number three, I've always wanted, but don't think I'll ever be able to get one, not just because of price, but the main thing being space, and that's an arcade cabinet. Now, I know that um, Pete, aka on a retro tip, mentioned this as well, um, so I don't want to be too similar um so i'll try and be a bit more specialist if i can um obviously i'd love to have a sega um cab um personally and also i would love it to run not just all the sonic games and everything but also an, a sonic game that you can only really play via emulation um used to exist as an arcade cab well well i say used to you can still get it as an arcade cab but rather than getting an arcade cab that just has that and it's all themed around that i'd love to have loads more games but that also included and that's um sega sonic the hedgehog arcade now it's actually a name of a game so in case those of you that don't know what it is it's basically a game that was only ever released in arcade never got a home platform release at least not as far as i'm aware um and what it is it's an arcade sonic game where you can play as either sonic Mighty the Armadillo, or a new character for the time, Ray the Flying Squirrel, who's kind of like a yellowy character. Um, and again, you go through various levels, um, and it's just really, really good. Played it via emulation and really, really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, having this character, Ray the Flying Squirrel, is interesting, different, but um, worked really well in my opinion. And it's got loads of really challenging levels, obstacles, you have to jump over, obviously, as the Sonic games do. But just really, really, really fun and really well laid out and put together. Um, if you've not checked it out, guys, have a look and Google it and see what you think. It's called Sega Sonic the Hedgehog Arcade. Um, and as I said, you can play, you know, up between three different characters. And it's just a really, really good game. So I'd love to get hold of an arcade cabinet That's, that actually includes that game, as well as, you know, loads of other Sonic games that are sort of commercially available. And, uh, and obviously, um, other games too. Um, like obviously um, Streets of Rage, um, Alien Storm, 
Biohazard Battle, lots of shmups that I really enjoy personally. Um, and the Disney ones, of course, like World of Illusion, Castle of Illusion, um, James Pond, codename Robocod, is an amazing game. I love that game. And obviously the classic Bubsy as well, which is just so cool. And Cool Spot is a great one as well, amongst loads of others. But for me, I'd love to have Sega Sonic the Hedgehog Arcade included, because I don't think it's ever going to get a release on a home platform. So, yeah, for me, that would be amazing. But just to have an arcade cabinet in general would just be out of this world. But for me, not only is it cost, it's also space for me as well, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd love to get hold of from a number three. Um, you probably would have to be a bit more customised, but hey ho, I'd still love to, to own one. Um, which again leads on to another game that I'd love to see completed fully, and that's Sonic Extreme. That was a game that was meant to be the next big Sonic game on the Sega Saturn back in the day. Unfortunately got cancelled at the last minute. However, someone's managed to get hold of the code and has been, has been able to start to rebuild it back up again as to how, as close to how Sega intended it to be as possible um you know if we could get a fully completed version of that and get that ported onto an arcade cab whew, that would be insane um or if not just being able to play it on the pc fully would just be out of this world or go one better and put it on the sega saturn so you can play it on the sega saturn how it was originally intended back in the day that would be incredible so right oh god um how are we doing for time don't gone quite a bit sorry people sorry about that um i'm digressing a little bit um, so yeah, and then my last one, my official number four, um, basically is something is something that I used to own um, back in the day, but then obviously as technology moved on, my parents basically got rid of it because um, it was like the family computer at the time. Um, but obviously I've kept all my old games from from that kind of era, and they don't work on updated PCs, and that's basically a Windows ninety five PC. Now used to own one, obviously big bulky thing, um, but I loved it. I loved it. You know, when you turn it on, you had that kind of famous opening noise sequence that everyone recognised as Windows. Um, and just games that I used to play on there, like Shivers, which was a bit like Myst. One of my favourite, favourite PC games of all time. Um, even games like Croc, games like Small Soldiers, games like... Um, uh, the, off the top of my head... Um, oh, Rollercoaster Tycoon... Um, stuff like that. Some of those games do still work on like Windows 8, which is what I now currently own, but a lot of them don't. Shivers doesn't work. Um, and uh, there's, other, there's also some other games I used to play uh, when I was growing up that don't work as well, which I can't... Oh, uh, Burn Cycle, um, which obviously was, was on the Philips CDI. They also made a PC and Mac version, but it doesn't work because um, the system that I have is too new. So basically the main point I'm making in general is that I'd love to go back and get a Windows 95 PC again and then be able to play all my old PC games that currently I have stacked up and I can't play because Windows 8 doesn't support it. Now I know you can try and run games um, in what's called compatibility mode where you can actually set your PC to run earlier games. So if anyone does sort of like think that, um, I have tried that. In case you're thinking of posting that underneath as an option, I have already tried that. I've, I've done loads of research, I've done as many different things as I can think of, tried as many different options, um, and I just cannot get these certain ones to, to you know, connect with that and do anything. They just do not want to run. Um, so for me, I'd love to go back and get a Windows 95 PC. Uh, it's one of my biggest desired things to get hold of, um, because I'll be able to then play on my older sort of Windows 95 slash 98 games, I suppose, that were never... Um, would never run now on a Windows 8 system. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope I've chosen some options that are different to other people's. Uh, thanks again, Novabug. You're an awesome dude, as always. And um, I'll be back very soon, I'm sure, for another video. Other than that, take it easy, people, and I'll catch up with you all soon.